Thanks for listening to the Facial Recognition Comedy Podcast. My name's Fiza Dasani. I'm Paula Viganalan. I'm Zara Ali. And today's esteemed guest, we have so many esteemed guests, is... Oh, I'm Mateen Stewart. I yeah. didn't know that was my turn to talk. I thought you guys were <laughs> going to say my name, but I'm Mateen Stewart. Thank you. Hi, Mateen fame. Stewart. Mateen. Hi, guys. We're so happy to have you. I'm so happy to be here. Fellow comedian. Super funny. Thank you. <laughs> I'll take all the compliments. We just did a show at Westside. It was interesting. It was a very interesting. Show. How did how did it go towards the end? It was it was good. I mean, well, was, was this a, was this a Goonie show? Yeah. yeah. Not that I mean to call out the producers and the <laughs> no, name I mean, of the I, show, but that's I love Ben. Fun. It's that's a good show. A fun show. Yeah, it's not a typical Santa Monica crowd. Though it was, it was a lot more diverse, and because I was there last night, and it was no diversity there. Oh yeah, yeah. that's usually our shows that we do at Westside. For some reason, Santa Monica it brings in that that demographic. Yeah, which isn't really tailored to what our show is about, but we we make it work. When We're you say expanding. that demographic, you mean white people? Uh, a certain type of like political liberal, politically correct white people. Let us make jokes about ourselves, guys. It's chill. Yeah. Yeah, they were. Yeah, I, I talked a lot about slavery last night, and they were just, their buttholes were just so tight. I know. Oh my! So you inherited the same the same type of crowd that we get when we do our West Side show. Yeah, we sometimes get uh, we get that type of white pe- person, and then we also get uh, co- like sometimes conservative brown aunties. <laughs> ah. so it's like a mixture. But buttholes are tight. But I always enjoy the conservative brown aunties. I love them. Those are the best because I feel like I'm talking to my mom, and I'm like, "This is for you." But you know what? <laughs> it's just like we're saying the stuff that they wanted to say exactly like i you know when my parents are watching my stand-up and i say something about like i don't know i don't know i don't want to throw a joke in but my mom will laugh and my dad will be like butt tight yeah i've I've seen that a lot with like old brown couples yeah the the women are like we can laugh now we can say this stuff (laughs) the men are like we don't want our daughters doing and i think it was like a pretty vulgar joke too so it was just really funny to see my mom like just that's great. Yeah. I like I like doing um, rooms. I've, I've done a few rooms with a bunch of Indian people. And I have a, a bit of my stuff about, um, because I dated an Indian girl for like six years. Is that but, why you're fluent in Gujarati? Yeah. yeah. What I, is that? that? I'm not, what is that? <laughs> Was that a, what, it's what on you your guess? Facebook oh, that's profile. My, that's my guy. I, I that. do digging. That was that, I, I put that years ago. That's so. Are old. you? No, I'm not. No. <laughs> oh, what? But I'm not. I'm Modern not. name uh, Mat- Matinche. Uh, no, uh, I don't Mateen. know. Came about to be like he's a better Indian than I am. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. not fluent. Exactly. Happy belated Diwali. Oh, happy well, Diwali. thank you, thank you, thank and you. And to happy, our listeners, <laughs> happy Diwali. <laughs> you want to learn some Gujarati? Uh, sure. My name is Matin Maru. Matin Maru. No, no, no. Just say. Um, I'm sorry. That was a sentence you're going to say. Just say Maru. Maru. Nam. Nam. Mateen. Mateen. Che. Che. There you go. I knew a little bit. Fluent. Back in, the, back in the day, but not anymore. So you guys were together for what, six, seven years? Six years. Six years. And then uh, she realized you're a comedian and left? No, no, it was, <laughs> it was a bit of, it was a, it was a it mixture him, of a lot of things. It but, took him that long to make a joke? Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, it was a mixture. I, that was a part of it because when we started dating, I wasn't a comedian. And so like mm. the lifestyle and it was just a lot. That's hard, it was right? a lot of things. Was this back in Detroit? No, it was here. Oh. I've been in LA for 13 years. He's born and raised in Detroit though. Yeah, for our listeners. Oh, wow. What yeah. were you doing in LA before comedy? I moved here to pursue acting. Yeah, you're a theater major. Yeah, I was a theater major. Like been doing it since I was like six or seven years old. And like I came out here in 2005 to uh, pursue my dreams. So, so have you been doing more theater, TV, film? I mean, I've commercial. I, I used to have a theater company that I ran um, for a bit, and then that folded, and then I was creatively depressed, and then I started doing stand up, and now I'm just regularly depressed. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's sad, but I'm not depressed at all. I, I, I say that jokingly, but um, but yeah, my, my quality of life creatively is better um, since I've been doing stand up. So. That's that's a bonus because I can still do all the other stuff, uh, but I moved out here to, to pursue acting. I used to want to be like a serious, like dramatic. Do you actor. still like? Would you? Yeah, still, still do yeah, I still go on auditions yeah. and shit like that. Yeah. So you know something I read on the internet is that, <laughs> so you know it's true is that Detroit has the second largest theater scene or theater district after New York. Um, I I don't know if it's that might be true, but when I was there, I was able to sustain a livable wage just doing theater. Also, I was living with my parents. So, um, but if you're a if you're an equity actor, 
you could work and make a living because as an equity actor, if you do one play, which is like 10 weeks, you're getting like five to six hundred dollars a week. I mean, you can live off of that in Detroit. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So then you're like, fuck this. I'm going to L.A. Yeah. So I saved <laughs> I, I saved ten thousand dollars and then Damn. yeah, I bought a car and my mother and I, we drove out. Oh, that's sweet. Um, so yeah. your mom supported this. Yeah. She's always been LA. super supportive, like the whole the whole way. Um, when I decided to be a theater major, she said, OK, uh, that was a part because I got a scholarship to become a theater major. So that was easy. Fam you. <laughs> Fam you. Yeah. Tallahassee. So it's in Florida. So. Tallahassee. Nice. The capital. What is what does your dad think of all this? Oh, he's 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 my biggest supporter too. Like he Aww. yeah, like oh. not, he 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 tweets and updates Facebooks, and he always signs pops. Doesn't matter who it is, pops. <laughs> I did meet your whole family when we were in Detroit. Yes, yes. Your whole family yes. was there. Your grandfather was it? Your grandfather, or your uncle? My uncle. Yo, he was definitely hitting on me. <laughs> That that sounds about he's right. This old, <laughs> he's a super old, adorable man. <laughs> yeah, I forgot you were there. What yeah. show was that? That was a. I was in July of last year, I think. Yeah. Okay. Did yeah. you take the bait? Nah, man. I should have though. Still single. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. That was okay because you were there for a wedding. Yeah, I was there for a wedding, and I like left the reception to go do open mics and stuff. Good job. Good yeah. Job. I came back. That was yeah. I remember that show. Yeah, yeah. that was a good show. It doesn't every. I feel like every family has that uncle that will hit on all your friends. Yeah, if they're around. Yeah, like every. Oh, I have a creepy uncle too. Creepy uncle. You have a man. creepy uncle? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't know if I have a creepy uncle. I don't think I have a creepy uncle. Have you been around your uncles in like in your adulthood with your adult friends? Yeah, no, not with adult friends. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't keep, just, I don't keep my friends around. Just my wait family. till that happens. Well, it's usually like the the family friend weddings and stuff, where like the creepy yep. uncles, like you know, they come out to play. Yeah, like <laughs> yep. someone's growing up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's always just like very like ambiguous wording. <laughs> You're just like, Ugh. so your family is like super supportive. Yeah, my family's always been super supportive. Um, I've never had a, a issue with me wanting to do something creatively, and, and they didn't want me to do it since I was little. Um, it's the only thing I really wanted to do. So right, and so then when you picked up stand up, did they start coming to your shows? Well, my mother's. She actually, I took a stand up class, which everyone's like. Um, she actually paid for it for Aww. my birthday, Aww. but she was like, I didn't think you were gonna be good at it. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> She's wow. like, because because I was I came from like a real like heavy drama background. Like I used to do like really serious. You're a plays. trained actor. Yeah, and um. I was going to go to grad school and I decided not to do that. But um, yeah, she was just like, yeah, you want to do it here? I'll, I'll get it for your birthday. And then that happened. And yeah, here I am. That's awesome. Seven years later. Seven still. years later. And you've been on Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah, I've, I've done. I, I haven't done stand up. Um, that's that's the only thing I'm missing from my from the, the goals. Stand up on TV. That's like the one thing I want to do. Oh, but so were these all like sketches? Sketches. I've doing? done a bunch okay. of sketches. Um, so on Kimmel, uh, John Oliver, yeah. HBO, Funny or Die. Yeah, Ooh, you were on a dating show on MTV back in the day? Yeah. I, when I moved here, I did like so many dating shows. Like so <laughs> many. Those used to be really popular back in the day. Yeah. I, I think, don't know what happened I think to I them. did like five or six. They would always try to like recruit from my undergrad for like the nerd shows. Oh, wow. So like uh, Beauty and the Geek and then like king of the nerds or whatever they would like specifically t try to like target us where'd you and, go like, to school i went to caltech in pasadena oh, okay. so it was like all nerds and i think there was someone from our school who did beauty and the geek but they like nerded her up more like uh, she was actually like fashionable or something and they're like nah like you gotta be tv to take her glasses off and swing her hair and she's like no she's hot yeah um but yeah i mean those it, for me it was like when i moved out here it was like oh yeah let me get on tv yeah that was the easy way to get on TV. That's fair. Yeah. What was uh, so you were on MTV's next? Yeah. What so what was your episode like? Uh, my episode was weird. I um they took us to Griffith Park, and it was me and five other dudes <laughs> that are on this bus, and then you each, come off the bus. You right? come off the and bus, you meet and the girl. then you meet the girl, and then you stay on the date, and you accrue one dollar per minute, and then if at any point. That she wants to next you. You've been next it. They created a word for the show, next it. Um, you you go back on the bus and then the next guy comes off. That's actually what Ariana Grande's song was based off of. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, next. Oh. Was, she's a huge fan of that MTV dating show. <laughs> so how long did you last? I actually won. So I, I got, what? yeah, I was, a, yeah. 
I, I was a third person off the bus, the bus. And um, I stayed 60, it was 66 minutes, but we shot it, it shot like a TV show. So, you know, we had to do retakes and like different angles and stuff. So it wasn't organic. Oh, so all. that's not like what? a true Was timer. It, no, it's it's whatever. It's very like mm, whatever they decide. Okay, but, um, oh, they're story editors. Yeah, and then at the end of it, they had the writers for the show, and then at the end of it, they say, "Well, here they come to you, say, well, you've been on a date for sixty six minutes. She's going to ask you for a second date. So, what, what's your answer?" So I had to tell them my answer before. Yeah, I had to tell this girl. So once I told her no, oh no, I took the money. Whoa, um, damn. <laughs> Yeah, because no, I. Um, you weren't really into her. You were just doing it for the TV credit. I was no. I had a girlfriend at the time. The Gujarati girl, right? No, no, no. It wasn't her. This was oh, like years up. before that. And, oh my um, goodness! And see, they're really casting people in relationships. Yeah. They, 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 don't, they don't. They don't know. They don't know. It was yeah. just. It was TV. So and then plus my phone bill was due. Um, yeah. So they give you. They gave you 150 bucks. <laughs> I'm not mad at we that. We could have been soulmates, but I had a bill. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you, so you got 150 bucks for being then, on the show, and then you get, the and then they give you 66 dollars in whatever cash. money you want. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Can we can we talk about the other show that you had like for your home? Um, or are we not allowed to? Uh, we could we could talk. Well, I got a, I bought a house and I got it renovated. It's a great house. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. It's a great house. Uh, Mateen throws some great house parties. I haven't been uh, yet. I know. I haven't either. I you went have a to, pool and uh, everything, right? I, pool, yeah. I went yeah. to the Canadian Independence Day party, the Canada Day party, yeah. <laughs> at the very end, and I was very impressed. Yeah, we were. I was pretty lifted by that. Yes, everybody was. Um, Do you have a basketball court? No, I don't. Oh, that was I one of the things we wanted. Because I saw you played basketball with Adam Sandler. Once, <laughs> that was so. wait, you did? We used to play at the YMCA. I didn't know if it was. And at, then at he the plays. Crib. We play um, on Wednesdays. It's so funny when I first moved out here, he would play at the YMCA downtown. But uh, on Wednesdays, it's comics play, and he'll, he'll come out some sometimes. Oh, that's nice. I actually saw that on Nexted. Yeah, that was like that, your that was fact. one of my things. Yeah, my facts. <laughs> So um, is it like a big group of comics? Yeah, we play every Wednesday and Saturday. And okay. actually, that's how I got to know a lot of people when I first started doing it. Because like people, the way we learn people is like association. Mm -hmm. So if you know someone from another thing, then like it's you become easier to, to recognize who they are. Right. And um, yeah, I mean, I was able to get to know a lot of comics from just playing basketball. Yeah, so we play on play on Wednesdays and Saturdays, and then there's a comedian basketball league on Monday nights. Oh, that's different. Yeah, it's like with referees and yeah. See, so it's good that the women are doing these meetups and stuff, even though no one really shows up. <laughs> people showed up to that people last do. one. Yeah, people do. I um, might I might be on. Well, I don't know if I can say it, but I won't say it by name. But their dating site ended up getting a friend pass a for referral like, yeah referral for this like it's an exclusive dating site or whatever yeah it's basically about. for instagram models and um guys who have a lot of followers oh wow but they, yeah. they still have to like go through an application process you'll have to have referrals and stuff i've never had a dating app before oh wow yeah and so they, this is they research your yeah. instagram they go and look at your instagram and if they feel that you're like hot enough then the, they'll let you in What's the, you can't take say the name of it I, I mean, I think they, they say like, you, I think I know they, what it is. Yeah, they're not. You're not supposed to. Okay. I don't know I what mean, the rules are. But Whitney like, Cummings let me, talks about it. So what's it? Yeah. Whitney, let me, you know, let me let, let me get in. And then. OK. All right. We'll wait for you to get in and then we'll talk about what's it. Like, I'm really excited for these adventures that are going to come. <laughs> <up>. <laughs> I'm never. Fizz has never done like dating app dating before. Well, can I meet people in real life? She's so. starting at the top. <laughs> I know. That's unfair. Top. It's so you should, unfair. You should start with like Tinder. Hold on. Man, you should hold off. You should go the good shit. Go I'm, back to MySpace. What's wrong with self love? Earn I'm your totally way up. hating. I'm <laughs> totally know. hating because I went through so much trash. <laughs> I don't want to go through trash. That was I don't, I don't still, blame you. I, mean, still, I, I found trash on the street. I didn't need to go online to find trash. I'm still in the dump. <laughs> <laughs> in the dump. <laughs> and it's on fire. It's all. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's all. It's all. I'm fairly new um, to all that too. Um, Cause I'm, I'm super old school and yeah. I was in a relationship while all that was like happening. So when that ended, it was like, what is this? Like, it's so, it seems so unorganic because someone can present who they are online and be completely different. Yeah. I like how you're saying that after you did MTV's next. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, it's worse. Well, was that your first credit next? That was my, I mean, I did stuff when I was little, but um, uh, oh, yeah, that was my first, that was my first TV credit gig here in LA yeah my, my you first were, uh, you were a child actor 
I mean, not, I wouldn't, I acted as a child. I was, okay. I would consider myself a child actor, though. No. I was just going to say my first TV credit was also a game show with Jill Chrissy. Um, Jill and I were on Idiot Test. Oh, okay. Uh, what's oh, with show? Ben Glee. Ben Glee, Glee. Yeah, Ben yeah. Show. So um, we won. Oh, wow. We won like a hundred bucks, which we split and got in the mail like... <laughs> I don't like that's awesome. Eight months later, don't they take taxes out on that too? I mean, I think if it's I don't remember. Okay, it was a while back, but idiot test that show's not on anymore. I don't think. Yeah, no, they ended it. Oh damn! But it was a fun game show. I like that one. Um, So how long have you been single? And also, uh, I know Mateen just through other comics, and then we ended up going. All of us were talking about going to Magic Castle at this like drunken Canada Day party. And then we all went, and I felt like I was crashing his, like, Tinder date the whole time. <laughs> no, it wasn't that bad. It was fun. It was it was an adventure. Was it a Tinder date, was. though? Yeah. Okay. Oh, it was an yeah. adventure. It was an adventure. Yo, oh, it's an amazing Wasn't Tinder Richard date. there? Richard, Richard was, was there. there. Richard oh, and Cervantes wasn't there, was there? And it was a very, um, you, you were out with a very interesting woman. I've heard yes. this story. <laughs> yes. Let's just keep I it haven't. at that. Okay. No, no, no. I haven't heard this story. No, we, can we just please? Keep it at that? Oh my I god! I promise you, she probably doesn't listen to this podcast. But, but who knows? <laughs> you never know. Are you interested in dating her again? No, 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 no. no then just no. tell the story. No. I'm not. He's just, he's so chivalrous. He's so nice. I'm I know. So nice. The yeah. fact that Magic Castle's a first date, was that a first date? Yeah, you set the bar real yeah, high. I did, I that's did insane. Bar high. I understand. You really cause it's don't a, know how to do Tinder. It's a medical condition, so. Yeah. Yeah. I just, <laughs> it's not a medical condition. <laughs> now it becomes worse. <laughs> I'm a very tall person. This person that I went to the Magic Castle with. <laughs> Is, was a lot shorter than me. How short was she? She's shorter than me. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like a lot shorter than me. So you just call that a medical condition. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's a, look, well, but the thing is, like, none of us got a heads up about this. I, I oh know. wait, wording, Zara, wording. <laughs> heads up. <laughs> and then you said no, I set the bar. I then you said I set the bar really oh high. My god. <laughs> wow, I'm a horrible human being. No, oh, but, I don't mean this in any to be like punny at no, all. No, it's no, no, no. Coming out that just way. Just fell out of your mouth. Yes, it is but. setting the bar kind of high. Uh, <laughs> but. <laughs> It's amazing for Mateen to have stepped up and done that. <laughs> yes. But like we were all surprised, you know, because we <laughs> Of course. That's I didn't want to be like, yeah, so uh... But you know, actually when when Richard did tell me, I I was like I had mad respect for that. <laughs> I, I had did. so much respect. I was like, you're so open-minded. I, I'm, I'm super open-minded. I was trying to become besties with your Tinder date, yeah. by the way. <laughs> yeah, she's the was... only person you don't want to bend your neck for. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But I mean, gonna... Zara's, like, Zara's like, take a bunch of pictures with me so I look tall. <laughs> <laughs> we had a great time. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did have fun. We oh, a... and we met Landry Fields, who's a former Nick. Oh, now that. And Toronto Raptors. Yes. Player. So that was that was a very interesting uh, thing because uh, your face when you saw him, you were like, "Oh my god!" Like I was, I, I noticed it, and you knew exactly who it was. Yeah. And then you were giving nasty looks to his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I used to have the biggest like NBA crush on this guy because he was just so perfect, and he went to Stanford. Um, he was like in the Knicks when the whole like Jeremy Lin, Lin Sanity era was going on. So like I you I remember that team because it was like it uplifted New York mm-hmm. from the dump that it is. You know, so it was like Damn. a it was it was like a pivotal time in my like twenties where I remember that. So I see him at the Magic Castle. I'm sitting next to him and I'm like, oh shit. It's him. I feel like I never like I don't know any athletes other than like the main ones. So I feel like I feel like if I like I'm sure that they've come to the comedy store. Like I'm I've seen big guys Mm -hmm. at the comedy store. I'm like I have no idea who this is. I feel like I would not be able to. Yeah, and the thing about basketball players, like especially really tall ones, as soon as you see a tall person, like oh that guy plays basketball, he has to. But Mm -hmm. uh, I recognize him, and I was I was like wow, you knew exactly who he was, and then you're like hey how you doing? Like yeah I know I know who you are. I know exactly who you are. But yeah they were cool we we uh we saw a couple magic shows with them yeah Wait, did you take a picture with him and your date no no oh. uh, no 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 I, no i mean th- that's tough framing you know, know. oh my goodness <laughs> Yeah, that um, would have been panorama. Hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> Needed two cameras. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I remember I was so mad when he got engaged. Uh I was so mad. And then I met his wife in real life, and I'm like, oh, I can't be mad. You're like a very nice person. They're, they seem like a very cute couple. Yeah, they so were. So like everything comes around, you know, like, I don't know. They were super nice. I think she followed me on Instagram um, after that. I was like, if I follow you, you got to follow me back. He didn't, though. 
No. 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 He's, what does he do now? He does is he, a scout for the, the Spurs. Oh, Spurs. Spurs, Spurs, yeah. Spurs, yeah. But that that was my NBA. Is I that what really, happens? I didn't know Zara was all into sports like that. I didn't yeah. know. Listen, I've been trying to like uh, trap an NBA player for a long time. Oh, that's so. true. So I, I keep track of some of the guys. <laughs> um, is that what happens after you retire from the NBA? You become like a scout or like a commentator? Well, yeah. I mean, I feel like that's a natural progression for some guys. Um, coaching, maybe? Coaching. and mm, Or like managing <gasps> oh, the team. Did you see, this is, I don't know much about sports either, but I read somewhere that Condoleezza Rice is being interviewed. The Browns. For the yeah, Browns. Yeah, to be head coach head of the coach. Browns. What? Yeah. She's a football person. So she was... Um, on the committee for the BCS. So she knows football. What, I'm sorry, what's BCS? It's, it used to be a thing for college football, like to figure out who was going to play in the championship game. Got it. Now okay. they do a playoff, but she's been involved in football for a while. So, so you not like, be right? Do you yeah, feel like she's qualified? Like she would do... I don't I don't know if she's qualified to be a head coach. I mean, I, I feel like she could be a personnel person. Um, but I mean, I would love to see it. If, if that happened, that'd be amazing. I feel Browns, like Condole- Rice. Condoleezza Rice can do whatever she wants. Yeah. I think she was like the, everybody's favorite person from that administration. Wait, 21 I'm minutes sorry. ago, ABC News said, I'm not ready to coach Condoleezza Rice. <laughs> <laughs> well, now we know. No. Oh. All right. But she's a big, big Browns fan. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. It'll be interesting. That's all I know about sports. <laughs> I want to name more like administrative people to coach different <laughs> teams. Uh, could, Colin Powell. <laughs> uh, That's all from the for same the, administration, though. Yeah, I don't know. I could see Joe Biden like coaching uh, little league. Uh, yeah, little league. <laughs> <laughs> or a, a girl soccer team. Or something. he'd be, but he'd like he'd every be time. Uncle Joe. No, no. <laughs> oh my God, yes. But then also every time they would get a goal, he'd start crying. <laughs> <laughs> it's so beautiful. Joe Biden. He might run for president. Yeah, he's thinking about it. Michelle what? Michelle said she wasn't going to, and I'm sad. <laughs> no, she doesn't need that. It's not over yeah. yet. You never know. It might happen Hillary, at some point in the future. Hillary like left the door wide open in a recent quote of from she her. She was like, I don't know. Like she wouldn't say she wasn't going to, and then she kind of like leaned towards doing it. It's it felt like it's probably up in the air for her too. I don't yeah. know. I don't, I don't. I don't think she should. I mean, she's lost two elections, you know. But she so. won the popular vote both times. Yeah, I know. She. I mean, they're not. I don't think the Democratic Party is going to risk that again. I don't know, man. I mean, the Democrats are real really, bad. I mean, look, they're all. Uh, both political parties are owned by the same rich people. They're just brand names. Yeah. I. I mean, but I do feel like in practice, there's a significant difference. Of like, well, yeah. it's just the it's the you know the. F- facade of ethics they both stand by you know again it's just about well I, you know i don't know there's good people and everything and but uh, <laughs> i don't know okay i'm, I'm going Purse down strings. The, i'm going down the list of talking points uh mateen you don't like french toast no what the fuck is that i i just how is that possible how dare not, you say that do you to know me? how polarizing French, that I statement know. is i just i just think it's overrated i feel like every i if i wanted eggs with syrup i just get eggs and put syrup on it I like how we were talking about politics and then we're like, nah, we have something more important to talk <laughs> <Yeah>. about. <laughs> because, you know okay, I, we're recording this on a Sunday. I'm missing brunch for this and uh, I see French toast and I'm offended. I'm pers- I feel like you haven't had the right French toast. That's yeah, what everyone How says. are you tasting <laughs> eggs that much on French toast? Because that's what it is. No, but like eggs are in cake. You don't, you don't eat cake and be like, but, I'm eating eggs. No, but French toast is dipped in eggs and milk and then like, I don't know. I, I just, I would, if I had a meal to choose, I would never order French toast. Yeah. Ever. I will never order French toast. I mean, it's your prerogative. Yeah. And I, I would always order pancakes over French toast. That's fine. I understand that. But have you had French toast on multiple <laughs> occasions? I've had, I've had a lot of French toast. Have you had Nutella stuff French toast? I'm, I think that's too rich for me. Okay. Here's the thing. This is what you do. And uh, I, I, I want to encourage you to try this. She's taking it so personally. Okay. Yeah. Next time you go to brunch, okay, the order whatever you want to order, but order a brunch dessert, which is a French toast, and like split it with the group of people that you're with. Yeah. We'll see. Something rich enough or something different that you haven't tried with French toast before. I'm just saying. I don't know. I try just, it. I'm just not a. But the issue is the egg. Oh, no, I've had. And the syrup. It, it, just, it, just, it just tastes like the ones that I've had didn't really. You just taste the syrup and the egg. That's all I But you know what? Like, I get that because my mom used to make French toast and I didn't love it. 
because it was too much egg. Yeah. So I, but she'd use like that thin ass like. Yeah, bread gotta, from the everyone's like, you got to yeah. use like brioche. Yeah, you got to use the right use a brioche bread. And it's all about the bread. That's a French toast is like one of the things that my grandma taught me how to make. Breakfast is your just nani taught you how to make French toast. My daddy, my daddy taught me how to make French toast. So can daddy you, can is you your, explain? your paternal, yeah. paternal, yeah. paternal, and yeah. grandfather. So I don't know. Breakfast is just a big thing in my house. Um, it was like the one time, like we weren't fighting, mm. you know? So like, it was like a timeout. So like, I've just kind of like, like moved on with like, just, I keep up the tradition of just enjoying brunch with good people and yeah. good food. Yeah. I like breakfast too, but I don't need French toast. Like for me, I don't even, I would prefer not to have pancake. For me, breakfast is, is hearty and savory. Mm. So I really have like eggs and grits and hash browns. Do they do, is a grits a Detroit thing too? I thought it was just like a Southern I don't, thing. I don't know. I think it's in the Midwest in okay. the South. I mean, a lot of people from the South uh, moved up to the Midwest. Yeah. So they, so all my family originally came from the South. That's just. Which how, state do you know? That's how it happened. Um, Florida, actually Florida and Alabama. So we were able to trace all the way up to like 1850 something because the people that own our family was pretty prominent in that area. Oh, wow. So they kept a lot of records. So, yeah. Interesting. So when I went to school, I was able in our black archives, this is one of the reasons I went to my college In our black archives, they had um, all the, the, the Gilchrist family that owned my family. They had all their records. And so I was able wow. to see. So they like, keep tax- records at A&M? Well, the, the, in the black so archive, it was like a HBCU, like a oh, historic black ba- college. Yeah. Okay, so got we it. had a black archives, which is which is we had a lot of like papers and like books and and stuff from from the area. So like this guy's like tax return and like his taxes, you can see his as his property. My family was listed. Is that why Trump doesn't want to release his taxes? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, it's still, it's still, it's crazy to hear you casually mention like, yeah, the family that owned my family. That's like, that's like still wild. But that's a story that's, that people that's have. So, that's right? it. Yeah. It's just like it's crazy. A, it's an American story. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't realize it, And that's why I tell people like, yeah, you know, and like my mother wants to get her 23 and me done. I'm like, dude, they're just going to tell you you're from West Africa. And that's what exactly what happened. Um, but uh, yeah, we can go back to that. And then there's a lot of records because this guy whose son he ended up being like the governor of Florida. So there's a lot of records on him. And that guy is a super weird dude. Like he never got married. He uh, did like everything that was against what Florida, he, he was considered Florida's worst governor. Do you uh, remember his the name? The son of uh, the person? Yeah, Governor owned. Gilchrist. Okay. And he died single, alone, and then he left all of his money to the kids in this town that he was living in so they can buy candy. <laughs> wow. Oh, specifically, like yeah. he would only be that given was, this that, that money. Was, that was in his will. How much wow. money? How I don't, much candy I don't, can you buy so with that? Did the Gilchrist family just basically end with him? Like all the fortune? Yeah, and yeah, I think I think so. I think he was like the the and I'm sure they had others, but yeah. Um but yeah, I don't yeah, we we aren't Gilchrist, we were Whitfields, but And this is from your mom or dad's my side? Mom, you were, my okay. mom's side, yeah. My dad's side is is also from Florida, but further south. When did the family move up north to the Midwest? So then they matriculated through Alabama and then from Alabama when all that um like the auto industry boom, then my mother's family, they start moving up to Detroit. So like a generation ago, two generations? So like my my The my auto industry boom was like three generations ago, Yeah, right? yeah. So, so like in the early 1900s. Yeah. Yeah. When Henry Ford was giving everybody jobs. Yeah. The mod- when the Model T came out, yeah. Detroit was like the uh, the center of the world. Yeah, he yeah. hated people, but he, fil- he hated everybody, Henry Ford, but he gave them jobs. Yeah. Because <laughs> they could work. What's going on with Detroit's economy right now? We're back. We're we're yeah, not yeah. bankrupt anymore. I feel like it's um, hipster central right now. It is very it's hipster, like hipster central. Hipster central of the Midwest. Um, That's part of the Rust Belt, right? Detroit, Cleveland, Pittsburgh. Yeah. And then there was a I uh, forget what his name is, but he was like re- this rich dude who was like reinvesting in like the stadiums and stuff in Cleveland and Pittsburgh a little bit more than Detroit, but he was like trying to rebuild it. Um, and I think Pittsburgh and Cleveland at least have like the medical stuff back, yeah. b- backing it, like all the, the hospitals and stuff and the startups, but, uh, Detroit's doing better. Yeah. Dan Gilbert is a big, big money man. He done, he's done a lot. And, um, this guy that does CompuWare, I forget his name, Peter something. He invested a lot. So all, all our sports teams are now downtown. Uh, we have bike lanes. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Two people can change the outcome of an entire city. Yeah, we got a, we got a new, we hired our, we elected our, our first white mayor. 
um, in like 50 or 60 years. You needed a white guy to clean um, it up. Is that, yeah. that, <laughs> that progress or is um, that... Oh my God. Uh, no, that's... I, I, it was getting clean before that, but we had a mayor before, Kwame Kilpatrick, who who did, did a disservice to the to the city and there was some corruption yeah there was a lot of corruption it's hard because like he's he's my frat brother he went to my college what? He, yeah, we played the same fraternity wow so like which fraternity uh, alpha phi alpha you, you can just tell by looking at people alpha who's phi? an alpha who's I, a kappa who's a <laughs> yeah people think that i guess I do you have a tattoo i do have a tattoo yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. wait what's the stereotype of it well, it's it's these it's these things where like the the Qs are the crazy ones, the Kappas are the pretty, pretty boys, ones, and the Alphas are the smart ones. Intellectual, and, yeah. and then yeah. the Sigmas are lame. And um, <laughs> damn, <laughs> we had that we for had anyone that, who understands Greek life. We didn't have Greek life on our campus because they were like banned, but we had like all the dorms take on like the properties okay. of whatever. So we have like the jocks and the nerds, but it's like within the nerd culture itself already. So it's similar, but I just am unaware of the so stereotypes. S- since you went to an HBCU, did you only have black frats? And yeah, we only had black frats. So yeah. we only had with the panhale. Um, and so the nine, uh, divine nine. So the five guys and four girls. But we didn't have them all at the same time because, you know, people would get in trouble for. Did you have like one Asian guy and like one Jewish guy? <laughs> no, actually not in my school. Like there were other people at our school, but not in our not in my not in my fraternity. We didn't we didn't have any others. But yeah, it was. And for me, we were a lot more popular than you know, say the football team or yeah. the basketball you team. You said you have a tattoo. Yeah, I have, a, I have my fraternity. So each each class, we call them a line. We design our tattoo, and then we don't have to get it, but you know, we get it. Like out of the twenty of us, I think like four guys didn't get it. I just had a repressed memory pop up. I did a pageant for the alphas. Oh. <laughs> Was that the pageant you did in college? Was that Miss Black and Gold? I did two pageants. Yeah, I did Miss Black and Gold. They you know, they asked, and I was like, oh, fuck it. What college did you go to? Um, University of Miami. Okay. Yeah. yeah. In Coral Miami. Gables. Yeah. Coral I know. Gables. Yeah. yeah. Hurricanes. <laughs> what are the pageant? What is that? It was just like a regular pageant where, like, you have a talent, then you have, like, the swimsuit section, which was her. At, you should but see it, college pictures. And then we had, like, uh, a question. Oh, did you have to answer? Yeah. yeah. Did you win? No, I didn't win that one. I did won you? my dorm um, pageant. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had like, it was Miss Black and Gold. That's because our colors are black and gold. Yeah, we we're Miss Black. So and gold. it's like an enter- a form of entertainment for the frat. I think it's a fundraiser. Yeah. Oh. So it's a fundraiser, and then whoever is Miss Black and Gold, she gets uh, at my school it was like a thousand dollars scholarship for the following year. Oh, cool. Yeah. See, they are scholarship ladies. <laughs> yeah, quote well, from Miss Congeniality. Those were my two pageant experiences. We we need to see the swimsuit first, though. <laughs> pageants are a lot of pressure. So in my um, sorority, we like refuse to put any other girls in pageants. So we we put on a male beauty pageant yes. for all and had like members of all the fraternities mm. in the pageant. We called yes. it Castle Point King because we were on our address was. Was like Castle Point. Um, so yeah, we had a great time and it was like a similar format. Everybody had to wear a bathing suit. They had to do a talent. They had to like do like this, a game show interview question. That's and awesome. it was also for charity. Yeah. Did y'all do those auctions for like you auction off guys for charity and we, stuff? We auction off guys and girls. Uh, I think I made $500 for the charity. Damn. Uh, but then I had to go on a date with this creeper. Um, so, you know. Yeah, we didn't do any auctions at my school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was gonna be like <laughs> no auctions at the black college that was not uh not oh allowed <laughs> there's there too many back in the day but we were like nah we didn't do any auctions Tapping out of the auction. <laughs> yeah we were we weren't doing any auctions okay so do you do you uh still keep in touch with your your network of fraternity brothers out here has it helped you in your adult life um i gotta have a couple tickets um because of it, uh, like parking tickets and stuff. Yeah, parking tickets. I'm um, not like like police officer. Tickets. You just oh, slash okay. the tattoo. Well, I had I had like uh, I like, like the Wakanda tattoo. Yeah, I had the Wakanda <laughs> in my lip. <laughs> um, Do you have a little bumper sticker or something? I had a like a, a license plate. Got um, it. Also, yeah, I think I got this role once because the casting director was a fraternity member. He saw my keychain. Um, but yeah, it's it's I keep up. With because we have you know Facebook groups and it's easier to keep up with a lot of people. So 
uh, out of the guys that I like pledged with, I probably still talk to on a regular basis, like four or five of them. So I see them every now and again, like weddings and, and things like that. So the pledging process at an HBCU, I mean, I went to University of Miami. It was a very diverse school, but it wasn't an HBCU. Yeah. It, the hazing process looked intense. I don't know if that's something you can talk about. But I, don't, very I, don't know what, I don't know what hazing is. What is hazing? <laughs> I don't know what hazing is. All I can say is pledging. Uh, our, um, it's very competitive going to a black school because like at the University of Miami, there's not that many black people at all. So like you have a like 12 guys in the chapter. When I was pledging, we had 50 guys in the chapter. Yeah. And at my interest meeting, there were over 500 men. Wow. Yeah, trying to become members. And it ended up being 20 of us. So it's, it's okay, you, know, you special. Yeah. We get it. You made it. I was you the only theater it. major ever to cross. You think really? that helped? Yeah. You ever. think it helped that they needed a theater major? No, I don't, I don't think I was like a token, token. the token theater major. <laughs> so can you, can you, um, you can step? Did you have to do? Yeah, we had, we had to do all that step and stuff. I, used, I stepped in, uh, in my uh, master's program, really? I was part of the Black Student Association, so I could be on their <laughs> dance and step teams. <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't do it with the frat. Like okay. the, one of the guys who was from the frats that like stepped uh, pretty hardcore, like choreographed and mm. stuff. So he performed for us okay. and like or, like performed with us and like choreographed for us. But oh, it's awesome. so hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's the hard. Other it's than hard. like flamenco, it's the hardest form of dance I've ever done. Yeah, it's it's pretty hard. Um, I wasn't on the step team because I didn't have an, enough time to commit to all that. But I mean, we did we did it when we had to do our our, our probate show, to like to show like here here these guys are. Um, did you have to learn strolls and stuff? Yeah, party so we had strolls. we had party strolls to different songs, and um, yeah, we even <laughs> those we even, were always fun during parties. Yeah. yeah, I enjoyed seeing that. It was a good show. And yeah, it's it's a thing at the end of the the party. You know, we do our our party stroll. It's like a dance through the party. Yeah, I'm so, so like, lost, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Science Island for undergrad. <laughs> Look, I've never been in a sorority or like into Greek life, but I do like black frats and sororities. Like they're fun. Yeah. So yeah. like a song would come on at our party. It's like, and which then, is like the mob. song. It's like your song that you like get into formation. Well, oh, okay. yeah, we, like, we would do that at the end, but like, yeah. like one more chance, Biggie by Notorious B.I.G. would come on. And then we had like a stroll that we would do around. Um, so there's probably like six or seven songs that we would do these different strokes that are like passed down from like each, each year. So like me and my, my line brothers, we came up with a stroll and now they still do that at our oh, school. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a stroll is like a dance walk through. A yeah. It's pretty much like an eight, eight count dance that you, That's that fun. you do repetitively to the same song. So. That's fun. And then our, our main thing we would do, it's called the alpha walk at the end of the party to a song called Mike Checker. And they've, each each school is different. And they do like the cues universally. Jumping. They dance to uh, Atomic Dog. Yeah. Like universally. Uh, that's like, mm, yeah, mm, yeah. Mm. And to me still, to me, that's like one of the coolest things to see. Like these guys get crazy over Atomic Dog. It's, it's amazing. And then a lot of, there's a lot of branding. The Q's oh, brand. The Q's. Yeah. Oh, my RA in undergrad had a brand from his frat. That's from the Q's. Was it, it could be for Sigma too. Cause Sigma's, what did it, did it look like the Omega sign? I don't remember. How okay. do they brand? Like what do they do? Put it on an oven or something or a stove? No, you then... take a, you take a, a hanger and you, you mold the hanger and then you put it on hot fire and then you. Brand yourself. Yeah. So you won't have auctions, but you'll have brands. <laughs> I don't. We don't. We don't, we don't brand. I, we don't I brand. Thought a little, that was a little severe. Yeah, yeah we don't. We don't brand. That. We don't brand. <laughs> we don't brand. There, we're not cows. Is there rivalry between frats? There's a little bit, like smack talking, and like you know, you talk. talk For, are talk there like events, it. like competitive events? Like we had intramural sports. We had like step shows where we okay, compete yeah. against the the Qs and the Kappas and the Sigmas. Um, like we want to see who who does the most service, who does the most That's sweet. raising the money. Because like a lot of times, I feel like when people think of fraternities, they have like a negative connotation about it because they see what's on TV or like you went to a school where it's like the frats just want to fuck bitches and shit. But no, nah, we we actually did community service every Saturday. Um, well, there know, is a different culture with the black frats, I think. And yeah, the white because w where it came from and started because you know we couldn't, they didn't allow us to join. And my fraternity was the first uh, intercollegiate black fraternity. It started nineteen oh six. Wow. At Cornell University. So these guys who are older men, they were in college in Cornell. They wanted to join other frats and they weren't. So they started their own. Like it started as a, like a social club where they would go and like read books and stuff. And then it just 
matriculated from the, yeah. what it is <laughs> yeah, today. Yeah. I like how it's like a social club and they're like, we're going to read by ourselves together. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be book club. We still aren't going to look at each other. <laughs> but even now, the way like every fraternity and sorority I've seen, even even if it's a social club, they, they still brand it as we do a lot of community service and philanthropy and um, do good things on campus. Like ours was, we were always in competition to have the highest GPA. Yeah, that was another one. And yeah. we like, girls were not allowed in the sorority if they if they were dumb, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Which sorority were you with? Delta Phi Epsilon? D Phi. What was, what was Delta's Phi Epsilon's thing? Like the, the stereotype. stereotype. Um, I don't know. It changes. Like, I don't know if you ever had, had this where like, it, just like different variations, like through time, you know, depending what, on who joins. What was it when you were there? When I was there, we were just like the, the nerdy girls. Yeah. Like there was another sorority that had all the blondes and all the perky ones. And then we were, um, yeah, we were like, just like a sorority full of engineers. Where'd you go to school? I went to an engineering school, oh, yeah. uh, Stevens, oh. um, in Hoboken, in New Jersey. And it was, um, like it, the ratio was like one to four, okay. um, female to male. So like the only way a lot of us women were going to make girlfriends was to join a sorority. Oh, wow. So yeah, it was like 30% of the students were in like Greek life. Yeah. It's, and I'm like, I don't want to pay to have my friends or whatever for me. Like my dad was in it and and then it was oh, so you were legacy. legacy. Yeah, yeah, so I would always wonder like, what was he? What is he doing in there with his friends? And um, and then I was born on the same day as Martin Luther King, and then Martin Luther King was a member of my fraternity. And then I went to King High School, and then I was like, I gotta do, I gotta it's try to do to it. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, these organizations are prestigious. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty prestigious. And for us, we wanted to make sure that we had um, that we were the leadership of the campus. So you know, and student government. Um, you know, running for Mr. Fam, you like to be seen like, oh, these guys are alphas. These guys, you know, we had a drum major, you know, they wanted to be everywhere. And I guess that's mm-hmm. when, you know, when I came in, it's like, oh, no, because I was pretty, pretty big in the theater um, at my school. So it was like, yeah, now we got the guys that's doing all the plays and theater. And it's yeah. So it looked it looked good. It was it was good. The Illuminati. Of yeah, school. exactly. <laughs> Honestly, I did it to make friends and to be more connected with women. And uh, I'm still like close friends with a lot of those girls today. Like we've all been to each other's weddings. We do annual trips. They come to my shows whenever I'm in New York. Yeah. It's a very supportive group of people. And even when I'm out here, uh, I don't have any emblems or anything or anything on my car. But like if I see other people's like bumper stickers or something, I'll just say say hi. And then we become friends. So it's kind of like how I made some like good friends out here too. Like, do you guys have like handshakes and stuff like that? No. <laughs> okay. No. I mean, no. Yeah, it's so funny. Like, I was, um, you know, just don't know. And then uh, I know you guys know Quincy Johnson. Yeah. For a second, like, I, I, I've been, you too? yeah, I've been, I've been friends with him for a while. And then like, probably like six months ago. Oh, he's an alpha too. Yeah, 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 yeah. We realized we're like, oh, like ah, and it's just like ah, yeah, you know. Did you do um, the handshake? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's to go. awesome. Yeah. Um. So there's there's a few alphas. There's some kappas in in the comedy scene too. I've seen them. Yeah. All the pretty ones. <laughs> All the pretty ones. Is that the is that Gary, the stereotype? Gary's a Gary's. Yeah. Oh Gary, my God, Gary really? Curtis, that makes ca- so much kappa. sense. Classic Curtis? kappa. That makes uh, so much sense. I'm getting it now. <laughs> he's pretty. He is pretty. Um, Man, Gary, you ain't shit. I'll tell you to your face. Damn. <laughs> Yeah, they have the stereotype of being like the light skin yeah, yeah, dudes that, uh, with the. Yeah, they so they do the camera and the, 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 the woo, all that. Ugh. Sort of like the the AKAs who would oh, be yeah, the, the pretty, pretty girls. Ones. Yeah, they they do the mirror thing and their there's, scroll dance. There's a lot of drama with them. They used to have this thing like the brown bag test. Oh, um, oh yeah. that's awful. Yeah, but that all started from like years and years of like. That's just yeah, colorism. Yeah, yeah colorism. But I um, mean, that's that's across the board. Yeah. For for people who don't know what the brown bag <laughs> test is, is you have to be lighter than a brown bag. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. But. I was uh, I was gonna say my undergrad. We have the same thing where it's like these cultures, right, within the each dorms. And so whenever we meet someone from Caltech, we're like, oh, what house were you in? And yeah. then that tells us like a lot of about that person. <laughs> and then they have the same like, oh my god, yeah. that was a red too. You know, I think like I didn't. I never was interested in joining a, a sorority because the, our school was very diverse and they were great with sort of collecting the multicultural students. So like that was sort of my community, yeah. you know, and it was diverse and yeah. I, I, had a, I had a couple communities. I mean, being in theater, I was, that was like a community in itself where yeah. a lot of my time was spent there. Um, but yeah, it was just nice to, to get out of that. Cause a lot of times people just get stuck. 
I was a film student, so yeah. that was a second <laughs> community. Yeah. So it seems like you had a very fulfilling life in college. And then did you move after FAMU? Did you move back to Detroit? Yeah, I moved back home for what, two years. What was that transition like? Because at me at 23 post college, I was like so depressed, like learning about the real world. And I'm like, oh, this is not fun being a grown up. It, it wasn't really that depressing for me. I mean, I went back home the because I would go home during the summers and then, um, but like for me, it was just knowing that my mom still wanted me to have rules where I was coming from a place where I was, I went from living on my own, doing whatever I wanted to do to coming back into her house. And my dad, my dad didn't really care, but my mom was like, well, if you're going to be out, you need to call me. She um, worries about you. know, you. like if you, you know, if you're out past three o'clock, just don't come back. Oh, um, oh. but, yeah. oh. but even my to this dad. day, she still does that. Like when I go home to visit, yeah. like if I'm out, she wants me to call her and like, even I live thousands of miles away yeah it's yeah my dad has that too yeah. like whenever i go back to new york for comedy if i stay with my parents uh my dad will just lo lock the door <laughs> oh he doesn't want you to come back oh no a... he like locks the door he's like you figure out how to get and i'm not letting you into my house but i don't understand what's the what's the it's, reasoning see, behind it's that it's just for her it's, my mom's like it's a respect thing yeah uh, it's also like an aversion thing like then you're gonna like follow the rules but it never works out that way yeah yeah, yeah. So now when I do go back, I'll just like figure out different crash pads and different places to stay in the city because I know if I'm doing comedy and in New York, you're not done with comedy until 2 a.m. Yeah. What time yeah. do they lock the door? Probably like midnight. <laughs> like it's pretty, we had we had yeah. like a, we have like security codes and all this stuff. And then my mom, will, my mom does stay up pretty late, but then she'll you'll get back and she'll be like, where were you? What were you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Like, and it's an interrogation. So you're just like, my, oh. my dad would change the security code on me. Oh, wow. Because like, he's just like, this is not, this is my house, my yeah, rules kind of thing. You're the, like, this is not the hotel. You're the Muslim terrorist he was worried about. <laughs> I guess so. His own daughter. I guess so. He's like, I don't want to let her in. Yeah. When, when I turned 18, my dad didn't say he didn't, you know how most dads are like, all right, you're, you're legal now. My dad's like, you're lethal now. You're lethal. <laughs> you're lethal. Lethal. What? Yeah. I don't know. I was just you're, joking. You're, but yeah. <laughs> you're lethal. <laughs> I'm lethal. In what sense? I don't know. I'm just dangerous, I guess. At 18. Oh. At 18. Nothing. Once you, once you like, once America claims that you're a grown up. Or an, or an adult, like you, yeah. you become lethal in in the eyes of, in his eyes anyway. Nothing's, so your dad, more, nothing's yeah. more terrifying than an educated, independent woman. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, for him anyway. So really like cool. your dad seems like he has a little sense of humor. Oh lethal, yeah, lethal. Where, where you know, do you think I get it from? I, I don't know <laughs> yeah. where you. You know, I didn't know yeah. if it was from your dad. Yeah, I mean they're like mean but funny. You know? <laughs> they're like mean Sounds, but funny. Yeah. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> there you go. That's how my Genetics. grandmother was. Or nature and nature. Mean but yeah. funny. Um, I think we have to wrap up soon, uh, but we have a couple questions that we ask every guest. Are we good to do that now? Yeah, I think so. Else? I think we can. Um, so we are Desi, South Asian, which you're very familiar with yes. from your relationship. Uh, yeah. So we always ask, uh, who is your favorite Desi or South Asian celebrity? Um, what's her name? Uh, she's on... What show is she on? She was on uh, Quantico. Oh, Priyanka Chopra. Chopra. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because of her acting or because she's No, beautiful. no, it's all aesthetics. <laughs> I was it's all aesthetics. <laughs> <laughs> it's all aesthetics for me for, uh, on that, that's in that so choice. Funny. You know, like, I love Priyanka Chopra. My mom hates on her so much. Why? <laughs> Probably because she's like, I don't know. I, you, oh, she, Frida, she, I don't know Frida why. Pinto, too. Frida Pinto. Is, she's yeah. also beautiful. Yeah. All aesthetics. Yeah. Well, no, I like, I like her, her acting better than... Other, but. Oh, but better than Priyanka's. Yeah, the, I Priyanka's think Frida, a hustler. Frida won yeah. awards for her for her role in Slumdog. Yeah, millionaire. I don't remember. Yeah, I think she did. So. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, our other question is, but you probably got a lot of this out in your relationship. Uh, this is a safe space. Um, do you have any <laughs> dumb questions that about our culture that you've always wanted to ask or that you? Like assumptions that you might have, or no questions too I, dumb in this safe space. No, yeah. I actually, I, I, I have, I was pretty, pretty in there. I was pretty, like did, I was. How many years was your relationship? Six, six. years. Did you get oh, to like really? go and like experience different events and stuff with? Yeah, her? so I did. I did. Um, I did a lot of the holiday stuff. Nice. Um, we went to temple. Um, you know, I have, I have wardrobe. I have some some traditional garb so you that's were like, like my ex has that too. pajama you were ingrained in the family and the no culture. well the family thing that that could be a whole podcast in its own yeah but, i was gonna um, ask because yeah i didn't meet her mom until like year five her dad still doesn't know that we were year together five yeah her I, dad still doesn't her, her, know. her dad doesn't know that we were still together and no one in her family knows that we lived together 
And that's classic. And I had to move out every time that her family came to visit. Indian I had to move all my stuff. stuff out. We lived together for three years. Where did you go when her family came? I just went for the day out with my friends. And did and you I get moved. it? Like, I didn't. I didn't. I did, but I didn't. Because it but feels it, hurtful. To, yeah, I've been in that situation. It got, to, it got to a point where you know, you, over the years and years and, and years of therapy afterwards, you learn that you start to not feel like you're good enough for people. And so when we would go through couples therapy after, towards the end, the therapist was like, "Have you ever thought what it feels like to be Mateen?" And she had never thought about it. Like she never thought about what I had to go through to be a secret to you know. Yeah, to her family. You feel like a part of her shame. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, well, you know, my parents are, you know, still married and and my my parents are successful. And then like you have all this issue in your family and, and they're gonna judge me <laughs> just Dude, because yeah. I'm black. It's, I mean it's so hypocritical. Yeah. It's, it's it's because you're black, but it's also because you're just like you're they're not married yet or whatever. It's like a whole combination there's of such things. A, yeah, there's such an um emphasis on honor and then also um on sort of keeping the same culture yeah. because there's an issue like a Hindus, a Hindu family might have a huge problem with someone marrying a Muslim yeah. and, yeah. and they're both Indian. That was the first yeah. thing that, that they asked yeah. when they saw my name when the yeah. mom asked my name was I Muslim. That was the first question. She yes. asked. Mm. And then the dad didn't like, cause her sister got married to a, to a Patel and uh, the dad didn't like them because they were Patels, and they said, he "Oh, said they that were they were that the, strict." He about said it. Patels thought that they were better than everybody. So your your girlfriend's family, um, ex girlfriend's family, they were Gujarati, but a Patel is Gujarati too. Yeah, so. but the Patels think they're better than everybody. It's oh, even within yeah. the Guju family. Yeah, yeah. So I have, my college roommate was a Shah. And she was trying her whole life to be a Patel and she finally married a guy Jeez. who's a Patel and she changed her name right away. Like when they got engaged, she started calling herself Yeah, my, 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 my ex is a Shah. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I don't know what it is. The whole like caste system and everything. Well, I'm a Muslim Gujarati. So they, they don't even, they don't even you see us. You should burn in hell. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure some people feel that way. I feel no. like they would just reincarnate you into something worse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that's our version, I guess. But I one thing know. I say about tragedy and you guys are a comic it you, some good stuff has come from it and um some of my realest moments have been talking about you know all the things that that happened and um yeah it was just it's just different I, I, I learned a lot and um yeah i learned a lot about a culture that had nothing i had nothing you I, might I nothing my ex has like all of his like outfits and stuff yeah. and like the thing the words he picked up and stuff yeah, i have I, look, I still wear my outfit sometimes yeah um and uh, yeah, it's it's good. I still love Indian food. It's <laughs> I was vegetarian for a long time too, um, because for of her, yeah. Aww. Well, I was before, and then I stayed because that was like the one good thing I had going for me, like the one good thing. <laughs> that was it. They liked that. It was like, all right, well, at least he's vegetarian. So your parents knew of her. Yeah, my parents knew of her. Yeah, but my mom, after a while, was like, "What the f is going on?" Like, what's yeah. going on? at one point, my mother even gave us. Like a like a thousand dollars to put towards a wedding. It was I was like yeah, and every so month. So were was, you were you engaged? No, I had bought an engagement ring, Aww. but that's another like that's oh, another. Oh man, like, you got to write a book about yeah. this. Yeah, are her parents together? Maybe. They're yeah, that's you know, subjective. I mean, that's it's because I was just interesting <laughs> how her so mom knew. funny about Indian <laughs> yeah. Indian families. That's subjective. It's yeah, like I mean, are they emotionally uh, together? Uh, they're physically uh, kind of in the they, same. They're house. married. They live. Okay, they're married. They're, yeah. Um, so that's interesting that she keeps that secret. Like the mom keeps that secret from the father. Like, yeah, it was like killing he, her. I feel like that happens a lot in to. Indian households. Like the, the parents like keep their secrets from each other because of like protecting each other, not wanting to cause drama and stuff. And I've seen that happen. And I, like too. I met, when I met her, her sister and her brother-in-law, if they would have offered me $10,000 to leave, I wouldn't have been surprised. Like, wow. That, Cause the way that, that that dinner had went, like if they would have offered me money to like back away because yeah. they, they were just like talking and talking to like, you don't know what's going to go, what's going to, so what, gonna were they the scaring family. you in, like out of the they relationship? They were trying to because okay. apparently the dad had some really like, he was very like fit, not physically, but emotionally abusive and he yelled and he screamed and um, she had a handicapped brother that they were always, they were worried about that lived there too. Um, so yeah, it was just a lot going on. So I tried to be as, uh, I tried to, to understand as much as I could, but still, after six years, it was like, it was just taking a toll on me. And then I was letting that take a toll on our whole relationship because I wasn't yeah. dealing with it. So I was just doing Well, I mean, it I sounds like she do. wasn't dealing with it either if she wasn't. No, it, she wasn't. But, you know, it's, she, she just, I was trying to, I was more 
concerned about how she was dealing with it than she was about how I was dealing right. with it. Right. I understand both sides of it, though, because from her perspective, like, yeah, that could, I mean, some of our parents take this so personally that yeah. they would, you know, feel, quote unquote, destroyed, which is narcissistic. But, you know, there is a fallout. But, you know, now I have a lot, like, I have a lot of empathy for my former partner I was with for about five years who I went through a similar thing because, you know, my excuse was like, I'm not doing this to you. I'm doing this for you. Like, yeah. you don't want to deal yeah. with them. Trust me. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I understand that. But ignorance is, bl- but I, but, but I for me, I felt like what I told, what I tell her is like, yo, if my mom told me she would never talk to me again, if I was to continue to be in a relationship with you. And I felt like I was at that point where I want to be with you forever. I just tell my mom, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's just how I, my, I was brought up, but she, it wasn't, it's a tough culture. Yeah, it was, it wasn't that for her. And I don't think it would ever got there. Eventually it was, but by the time she said she was ready, we were it was already over. I mean, I can I was imagine. Che- I was checked out. I can imagine you like picking up a lot of psychic pain from that experience. Yeah. Just and I was acting out. I was acting out. Yeah. My behavior was not that of a person that it should have been. But such is life. But now you're out on Tinder dates. <laughs> no more Tinder for me. <laughs> no. <laughs> no more. I have a I have a young lady that I'm seeing right now. Oh yeah. yeah. It's going pretty well. So that's we'll great. Dating. Was she from Tinder? No, we met in real life. Whoa, yeah. that happens? Yeah. yeah. Comedians meet people in real life? Yeah, I tricked her too. What? <laughs> what? Wait, you have to of clarify. We can't leave it like did. that. <laughs> what does that not, mean? Not, no, because she's she's very beautiful. And so like, I, I don't know, I use my charm. I feel like. That's I, not tricking. Um, I guess. No. You feel lucky to have her. Yeah, she's good people. That's how you know you win. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I do want to, I cut you off earlier and I'm sorry. Why does your mom hate on Priyanka Chopra so much? Um, I mean, I'm sure there's some deep seated. Is it because she wants you to take all the roles that Priyanka Chopra has been offered? Probably right that's so like that's classic is Indian that parent, but like, <laughs> but she'll hate on Priyanka's like looks and stuff. And Priyanka is like a beautiful woman. She's beautiful, she is. And she'll yeah. like be like, well, what does she do to get so successful? So maybe she does. It's that <laughs> maybe it's that feeling of lack where like, oh, if she's successful, that's taking success away from me, and that's not true. I yeah. think maybe she just is in love with Nick Jonas and is upset about. Priyanka. <laughs> I've this hearing, was pre Nick Jonas. I've been oh, hearing okay. that. That's fake, though. I've been hearing it's fake news. Fake news? Really? Yeah, Priyanka Chopra and Nick Jonas. They're mm. engaged. But you never though. know. You never know. Mm. Honestly, it's know. not really affecting my life, so I don't care. Not my life. <laughs> but say if Priyanka Chopra met you at a party, like now, yeah. she's like, let's get engaged. Would you say no? Yeah, I'd say no. Really? Yeah. You would say no if to she just was like, Chopra. Let's get engaged. Something's going on there. Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> That's a red flag. <laughs> I, I, I okay, like after a month of dating. Maybe. Yeah. Like in my current situation, I feel like I couldn't just drop the person I'm with now just because I'm not that kind of person. Yeah. But, but if you were well. single. But if you were if single. If I was single, yeah. But no, I don't know. We have to date. Like, yeah, you have to know her. Yeah. yeah well, they didn't date that long, you know. Be some fake news. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. Something to think but about. But celebrities are either. weird though anyway, so it's different. Yeah, I don't know. We'll all find out one day. On next episode of <laughs> Quantico. <laughs> well, this has been fun. Yeah, thanks yeah, you guys thanks for having for, me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Let's go to brunch. Oh, wait, let's do our um, social medias right. real quick. Can sure. Paula <laughs> V. Um, uh, if you guys want to see video of us, uh, of our podcast, uh, we have our all of our videos up on patreon.com slash facial recognition comedy, and you can uh, subscribe there. We also have our website, which is facial recognition comedy.com. We have our Facebook and our Instagram, also facial recognition comedy, and our Twitter at facial rec comedy. Um, where can where can we find you, Mateen? I am at Mateen Stewart across the board. Okay, yeah. cool. Is that can you spell let's S T E M A T E E N S T E W A R T at Mateen Stewart. Yay. Um you can find me at Paula Viganalan, P A L L A V I G U N A L A N on everything. That's my website, my Instagram, my Twitter, my Facebook. Uh, and this is Zara. You can find me on all the social medias as a really Zara. Zara is called Z A H R. 
And I'm Fizza Dasani. You can find me at Fizza Dasani. I'll spell that for you. F-I-Z-A-A-D-O-S-A-N-I and FizzaDasani.com. Oh, we also have for our December show, we have a special edition. Zara, do you want to tell them about it? Yeah. So our December show at the West Side is going to be the second Sunday of December. It's going to be a special Zara edition of facial recognition comedy. So uh, there's plenty of Zaras in comedy and we're all getting confused for each other all the time. They are not the same Zara. We're not the same Zara, you guys. Uh, So yeah, come out. December 9th at 9 p.m. Yep. Second Sunday of every month at 9 p.m. at Westside Comedy Theater in Santa Monica, California. Oh, and we also got into SF Sketch Fest. Yes, January 19th. Yep, we're going to be there.